This mini PC has 128 gigabytes of memory, tons of CPU cores, lots of expandability, dual 10 gigabit ethernet, Wi-Fi 7, and even super fast USB. I have to say, this has become one of our favorite systems, and in this video, we're gonna go into why. We have a ton to get into today, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from SDH, and this is the Minis Forum S1 Max. And it might be one of my favorite mini PCs right now, and certainly takes my top spot for my favorite AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 system. They packed so much into this little system that it is absolutely wild. What's more, it has a ton of different operating modes from silent to high performance modes, making it one of the, if not the highest performing AMD Ryzen AI Max systems that we've tested. And we've tested quite a few of them at this point. So in this video, we're gonna get you all of the awesome things that this little system has and some things that I think could be just a little bit better. So let's get to the hardware. Okay, let's start with the overall design of the system, guys. It actually looks pretty slick other than the giant warning label on the side. And uh, frankly, this looks a lot better than the old Vinny's form PCs. And they've done a lot to this to make it a little bit better. And I'm just gonna show you one before we get to even the back of it, just I think this is a super idea. And that's the fact that the power input on this is now internal, right? There's an internal power supply instead of having a giant power brick. So in previous generation systems like the MS-01, super popular, I think it's a great system still, that one had an external power brick. So you always had like, you know, the base unit, you had the external power brick. Some people love that because they're easy to replace. On the other hand, you know, let's face it, having a integrated system is just kind of a little bit nicer, right? Another key aspect here is how do you even orient this? So a couple ways. Number one, you see we have rubber feet on the bottom. You can put it up straight like this, like a little tower. You can also use the rubber feet on the bottom and turn it into a little horizontal system like this. And on the front, we get a pretty darn good set of connectivity, right? We get a combo headset jack. You also get two USB type C ports. These are USB four ports. So lots of bandwidth there. And then you get a type A port there as well. So decent amount of USB connectivity just on the front. We also get our little power button, always useful. Now let's turn around to the back of the system. Now, when we look at the back of the system, you can see we have an HDMI port, two USB two ports. We get two USB three type A ports. In the middle though, we get USB four V2 ports. Now these are the 80 gigabit per second ports, guys. This is absolutely an awesome feature that we're getting in some of the new mini PCs. And just so you guys know, the reason it's not on set, but we are testing also the minis form MS-02, and that also has a USB 4 V2 ports. Based on an Intel CPU, we'll get to that very soon on SDH. But today, we are focused on this system. Now, there are some other things that I wanna to get to here because we also get dual 10 gigabit LAN. Now, this uses the new Realtek 8127 chips, chips or the RTL 8127 chips. That's a awesome little feature because it gives you a lot of network performance, guys. One quick note on these, just you know, got to point it out, is that if you are installing your own OS, depending on what OS version you have, because it is a new 10 gig network adapter, you may have to go and install drivers. They may not be out of the box. So that's kind of a little bit of an annoyance whenever you have a new type of network controller and you do have it here, but out of the box, it will work with the OS or the Windows 11 Pro OS that's installed on here. It's just, if you install something else after the fact, you may have to go do that if you're using an older version that doesn't have drivers built in. And then on this side, we have a low profile card slot because like other mini PCs that we've seen from Minisform, you get the ability to add a low profile PCIe card in here too. How crazy is this guys? One other quick one on the external part of this though is that this system can be rack mounted. So the idea behind this height is that you can go put this into a 2U rack mount if you have two of them, we only have one, so we couldn't do that. But if we had two, maybe we would go do that. Now on the back of the system, there are two screws that allow you to get inside. And then you have the nice new Minis Form MS design, which you just go and slide the main motherboard part out of the chassis. I love this design. I wish every manufacturer did it. Now, once we're inside, you're gonna see on this side that we have a giant heatsink and two fan unit. This is to cool the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 processor that has 16 Zen 5 cores. Plus it also has the AMD Radeon 8060S GPU. Now we've covered this GPU a number of times on STH and the CPU as well. But the key thing here is that 
Although this is an integrated GPU, it's not something that's on a PCIe card or something like that. It's still absolutely awesome because the performance of it is, uh, is frankly well above what you would see from a previous generation GPU. Now, next to that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 processor, you have 128 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory. That gives you a faster speed. So instead of running at like a DDR5, say 5600 or something like that, you're getting 8,000 mega transfers per second. So a couple things here, guys. First, that 120 gigabytes, that's what you get. You don't get 64 gigabytes unless, you know, they come up with an option for that. You can't put 256 gigs or anything like that in there. You're getting 128 gigabytes. It also means that this entire section here with the heat sinks and fans and stuff, we've actually taken this apart a little bit, but you don't, you'll never need to go do that, right? You just never would need to because all that stuff is going to be under there and it's not user serviceable. The CPU, the memory, all soldered on here. Now, I will say that some folks will want to go take off these fans. And the reason for that is that under the fans, we get our first M.2 NVMe drive slot. So you're going to see that here. We also get our Wi-Fi card. This is a Wi-Fi 7 solution. This is the MediaTek MT7925B solution. So if you want to look that up, you can. But overall, we get Wi-Fi 7. Remember, we have those dual 10 gig ports. We have USB 4, USB 4 V2. We've got all kinds of connectivity here. And we have the PCI slot. I mean, tons of stuff here, guys. And just real quick, if you want to add a second M.2 drive, that will go right above the Wi-Fi 7 card. So there is the option. We don't have it installed in here, but you could go and add a second M.2 if you want it. Now, moving to the other side of the system, there's actually kind of less than I would expect, but uh, let me just show you kind of what's going on here, guys. So first off, we have that internal power supply and a little fan for that. Now, this is an internal, this is a light-on power supply. This is a well-known power supply vendor. Now, the other side to this is this also has a PCIe by 16 slot. And you're going to see that here where you have this giant by 16 slot. And in the marketing materials, they're going to tell you that this is a by 16 and like, yes, it's so cool because physically it is. Electrically though, it's only a by four port. So we're going to show you this right here behind me. And you can see that electrically, this is only a PCIe Gen 4 by four slot. That's all for the internal expandability. But overall, I mean, guys, this is awesome, right? You have the ability to go and add a second an M.2 SSD, so you can have two there. You can add a card in with a low profile slot for the back. You also already have your dual 10 gig Wi-Fi 7. We have a lot of networking built in. And you have those USB 4 ports that you can go and you know do Thunderbolt or like whatever the heck you want to go do on. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. Now, something to keep in mind is that there are a number of different modes that you can run this in. So you can run it in a quiet mode that really stays, I think, below like 42 dBA or something like that. Then you can go ramp up to higher TDP levels. They have a rack level. So if you want to run two of these in a rack, you can do that. And you can get a lot more performance out of it. Now, just running out of the box, something that we noticed was that when we set it to have 32 gigabytes of system memory with 96 of the 120 gigabytes being dedicated for the GPU, we actually got results that were freaking awesome. And let me show you what I mean by that. This is the Framework Desktop versus this. Now, Framework Desktop is physically a larger thing. They have an Octua fan. But at the same time, we got way better performance on the minis form. It doesn't seem like this is a huge deal, but like getting 15, 14, 15% more performance multi-thread is uh, pretty darn awesome. So I'm bringing up another Geekbench result. And these are two, same system. But the big thing that's different between these is our split between the CPU and GPU in terms of the memory. And this has happened, by the way, on all of the systems that we've reviewed with the same AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 but nobody talks about this, right? And that's really that when you do the split and you change from 32 gigabytes going to the CPU to 128 gigabytes, you see a massive difference in terms of the overall CPU performance. I don't 100% know why that is. It must just be how the memory is connected in the system and all that kind of stuff, but here you go. So our baseline here is we have 32 gigabytes for the CPU, 96 gigabytes for the GPU, and in the top one, we basically are putting all of it into the CPU. Now, and on Geekbench, if you wanted to see that, you could see that, uh, you know, we on our baseline, we have 31 and change, and then we have about 125, so about 128 gigabytes on the other one that we're using as our comparison, right? So we get significantly better performance if you're doing CPU related instead of GPU related tasks, if you allocate more memory to the CPU versus the GPU. But I wouldn't buy this system just because I wanted a really good CPU performance. I would buy the system because I cared about the GPU and I cared about doing AI. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's go over here to MLPerf Client V1.5. Now, this is an industry standard benchmark. This is really what people use in the industry to talk a lot about the uh, AI performance because you can run a bunch of tests. Now, we have a ton of, ton of different uh, metrics and stuff on this, but I'll just tell you that this is the fastest of the four systems that you see in front of me. The GMK Tech, the Framework Desktop, the B-Link, the Minis Forum at S1 Max was the fastest. So 
overall great results there. Now, one of the nice things about systems like these is that you can run everything in memory. And so you can run larger models in memory without having to go to like crazy low quantization and lose accuracy. So by using larger models at higher precision, you generally get better accuracy. And that better accuracy means that you can trust the results that you're going to get out of one of these. And I know there are going to be people that are like memory bandwidth, Patrick, that's all I care about. And that's fine, guys. Like there are a lot of folks that that's all they care about because they do run it like running those models really, really quickly. And frankly, this is a way to go and run large models, maybe not as fast, but you can at least fit them into memory. And if you want to, of course, you can go and run smaller models like this, for example, is Ministral 314B. While this isn't super fast, it's just about the speed that you can read. So it's not necessarily the slowest thing in the world, even though you aren't using those GPUs with GDDR memory and instead are using the LPDDR5X. So just as an idea, you know, this is what you get even on smaller models. And so that just kind of gives you a little bit of a range. But of course, all those ML perf results are probably more useful than this to a lot of folks. And let me just talk a little bit about power consumption and noise, guys. This idles at somewhere in the 9 to 12 watt range. Of course, things always move around because, well, it's a Windows box. And so you see that power move around. On the other hand, the maximum power consumption or the power consumption actually, let me just say while we're doing this, is about 120 watts. And that seems to be pretty normal. You can actually push it a little bit further than that. One thing I will say, though, is that it is not dead silent. At 120 watts, um, I can certainly hear it here. You're going to get about 42, 43 dBA at one meter, which is, you know, not necessarily the loudest, but it's also not super silent. I wish that Mini Swarm just made this a little bit larger because then they could make it silent. Now, with all of these videos, I like to have key lessons learned. I mean, what do we learn by running all these systems, testing them, and, and just seeing what the differences are? First off, here are four systems, and I stack rank these, and they're in a specific order, right? Over here, we have the GMK Tech Evo X2, and this was a really good system. It was one of the first ones we had with the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. And frankly, for the performance per dollar, this is usually the best one out there. The one difference I will say is that this has two and a half gig ethernet, which just kind of stinks. It's also not the quietest or anything. And so just to me, this was a good system at the time, and it still has value if all you really want is a system that can just run by itself and just run models and you don't really care about the network performance and all that kind of stuff, then the GMK Tech is still actually not that bad. It's probably my fourth favorite because I think since this came out, some of the newer systems offer more features. And in this class of system, even though they cost a little bit more, I actually really like the creature comforts. And let me give you an example. The Framework Desktop, I think, is better because it has a five gigabit NIC. Plus, I just like the fact that it's a little bit quieter. It's easy to service. Overall, I think Framework did a good job on this. But on the other hand, I wish that, number one, it had 10 gig networking. And number two, I wish that it had a slot for its PCIe, which is something that the Minis form addresses. Now, moving on to the B-Link, depending on when you see this, B-Link said that they're going to fix the Intel E610 issue. We'll just say if they do fix that, I think this has a legitimate shot at becoming the number one system because it's relatively quiet and it has the best network by far. And also, there are a lot of folks that just aren't going to go and tinker with systems. So if they're not going to tinker with systems, then this looks most like a Apple Mac Studio and I think folks just will like this aesthetic. So I think the B-Link actually has something really good here, but that really hinges on whether or not they fix that Intel E610 networking. Now, let's get to the Minis form and why I really like this, right? Number one, I think it has a awesome mix of expandability, right? Not only do we get up to 120 gigabytes of memory, we get that AMD Ryzen AI Max plus 395 processor, but we also get things like USB 4 ports. We get things like the low profile slot so we can add a low profile card if we want. And on board, we get dual 10 gig ethernet, which is probably the best in class. Just to me, I think that this has the right mix of features and it's also really easy to service. I know there are folks that are not going to want to service systems and that's fine. But on the other hand, if you do, you don't want to service it and you want to go tinker with it. I think this might be the best one. But also we need to take a step back and just see how the market has evolved. Let me let me show you a couple of the systems that we have here, right? This is the Asus GX10 Ascent GX10, which is the NVIDIA GB10 version. Uh, this is also the Dell Pro Max with GB10. And so these are the NVIDIA GB10 systems. And I think that these are actually pretty darn good. One of the things I really like about them is the fact that they have that Connect X7 networking. So you get to stay in the NVIDIA ecosystem. And there are a lot of things that still are easier to use on NVIDIA versus AMD. AMD is doing a great job on pushing their software forward but it is NVIDIA and, uh, you know, frankly, everybody develops for NVIDIA and then they develop for other platforms second, right? That's just kind of how it works in the industry. So those are really cool. The other thing that I want to point out though, 
is that this is not the cheapest system. But I think another thing that's really important when you compare these systems, right? If you have something like the original DGX Spark, that was like $4,000, but it came with a four terabyte M.2 SSD. If you go down to a one terabyte model like this Asus Ascent GX10 is, well now you're starting to talk about $29.99. And so as you move from a $2,000 unit up to, you know, into, well, into the 2000s, the difference between going AMD and, and NVIDIA is really shrinking. And also, you know, dual 10 gig is great. Having that low profile slot is great, but one 10 gig with one 200 gig already built in, that's also really good. Now, the NVIDIA parts do idle at a lot higher power consumption because they have that NIC. So if you're not using it for clusters, that might be something just to consider. On the other hand, I do think this mini form is a great unit. Now, one other one that I think we should talk about is the Apple Mac Studio. Now this is an M3 Ultra with 512 gigs memory. Apple, depending on when you see this, they're adding the RDMA networking onto Thunderbolt. So you'll be able to actually cable these things up and get, you know, a terabyte, two terabytes of memory using just Thunderbolt cables, which is very inexpensive. It may not be as fast as using something like the networking on the GB10, but on the other hand, you just use Thunderbolt cables, so it's relatively inexpensive. But on the other hand, guys, this is a $10,000 Apple Mac Studio. That's really expensive for a lot of folks, right? $2,000 or $2,500 and you know that kind of range, that's also very expensive, but it's also more affordable. Now, I know some folks will say, well, I could get like four of these these AMD systems for the same price as the Apple. And that's true, but there are things that you have to think about when you're talking about scaling, that sometimes scaling in bigger units is actually better. But this mini form has one other feature that really you don't get with the Apple side and you don't get with the Nvidia side currently. Now, that, that's probably gonna change in the future. But right now, if you want Windows, because a lot of games run on Windows, then you're gonna want this AMD system versus a Mac system or even a NVIDIA GB10 that's running on Ubuntu. So for folks that want to run large AI models and they want a Windows desktop and maybe they want to play games, this is a really cool system because you can do all of those things. I think that this is my favorite AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 system to date. I think that if I had to pick one of these four to use and buy, I would definitely pick the Minis form. You know, we've been testing these things for a long time and using for a long time. I think Minis form did a really good job of this, which is a little quieter, but other than that, I think they did a great job. On the other hand, there are other options in the market that, you know, AMD, Nvidia, Apple, lots of different options that you could go to. But I think that if you want the AMD option, because you want to do everything, you want a game, you want to go and do large AI models and you just want a nice Windows desktop or, you know, maybe even run a Windows desktop with Windows subsystem for Linux and have Ubuntu there too. I don't, I don't know, go crazy with it. This is like the most awesome system because you get that low profile expansion slot. That low profile expansion slot is something that Apple doesn't have. The B-Link and Framework, Framework could have done it, but for some reason they didn't. GMK Tech didn't do it. And these little GB10s, they already have the Connect X7 NIC, but if you wanted something else, you're kind of out of luck because well, you just don't have a real good way to go and expand. So just to me, guys, this has so much going on for it that I love this little system. But guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments because this is getting crazy. This is absolutely a wild look at some of these systems. And I know folks are gonna have very different opinions than I have. I recognize that. Love to hear what you guys think in the comments so we can calibrate future reviews. And hey, if you did like this video, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.